Hey there, friendarinos. Today's video obviously may contain subject matter that some people may find disturbing, and as always, viewer discretion is advised. But I want to take this moment to say that today's video also contains somebody I would consider to be my honestly best friend, and that is TDN. Now, some of you may know who TDN is. Uh, he was a narrator on YouTube, still does some narration stuff, which we'll talk about in a second. But he's also a really great guy. Uh, one of the best thumbnail artists out there for narrators that I've ever met. And he is actually the man who taught me how to properly use Photoshop and create the art for my channel. Like, my, my thumbnails and such. He is literally the reason I have been able to make the art and thumbnails that I have. I've gotten commissions for channels like Swamp Dweller, Let's Read, um, Bad Vibe Storytelling. He makes most of Swamp Dweller's thumbnails. This man is a powerhouse in Photoshop. He makes some of the best thumbs I've ever seen in my entire life. So, to say that I owe him for some of my success is an understatement. I absolutely do. But that's not why we're here. I'm here to say that TDN, a uh, good friend, obviously, and then we'll be in the video narrating two stories... He is also an audiobook narrator, and he and Boris Basic, a fantastic author, have worked together, and he narrated an audiobook that is down in the description on Audible. If you have an Audible account and you have credit, please consider checking this book out. If you're not on Audible, consider doing it. I think they're doing a three-for-one special if you buy a membership, I think. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe they are still. I don't remember. But regardless, check this audiobook out. TDN is an amazing narrator and a fantastic guy. Boris is a ridiculous author, and you will not be disappointed. The book is 7 hours and 38 minutes long. It's called Suicide Town, Horrors in a Small Town. And just, yeah, check it out, please. So, oh, that said, let's move on with the story. This intro has been too long. So, uh, yeah, here we go, and enjoy. I have a really messed up story from when I was a delivery driver for a pizza place, which would have been back in 2010. I only worked there for a little over a year, and I left because I learned that my city was not as nice of a place as I thought it was. Well, that and the fact that the store manager really did not care about his employees, and would write people up for literally the most minor of infractions. I know this is a bit off topic, but... He would write you up if your shirt wasn't tucked into your pants, or if your pants weren't the right color. Mind you, there was no written policy that stated what color your pants had to be, and at the time, corporate basically just said they couldn't be jeans, or shorts. But he was adamant that the requirements for working there was to wear black pants. Working at this particular store, for this particular management... It was an absolute nightmare in and of itself. There were two neighborhoods that were actually marked as no deliveries after 6 p.m. for very specific reasons. And, despite this, if they called an order in instead of doing the online order, the manager would say that we had to take it. I will say it again. There were very specifically documented reasons as to why we were not supposed to go into these areas after dark. They were high crime sections of the city, and walking around with cash in your pocket and a cap that said pizza place was literally asking to be robbed. Thankfully, we rarely got a call for these areas, but there were a couple of residents that had figured out the workaround and we would always dread taking them. And while this part of the story isn't mine, this part is where the inevitable happened. One of the newer delivery drivers, and I mean newer as in only there for like two months or so, got the delivery to go to one of these neighborhoods. When she mentioned that she was nervous about driving into the area, the manager just told her not to put the topper on her car and to not wear her cap, so that she didn't stand out. Well, she took the order as was requested, and after about 30 minutes, we got a call to the store, which was her yelling at the manager, that she was carjacked. Apparently, the person that ordered the pizza just used a random address on the street, 
and when she pulled up, he waved her down, saying it was his. She didn't know what to do, so she started to unbag the pizza to give it to him, and he pulled a gun on her, telling her to get out of the car. She did, and this guy literally drove off with the pizza and her car. She had to walk for about 20 minutes to a gas station so she could call the cops and the store. I was actually at the store when the manager got the call, and I remember him asking if they took the store's money that she had on her. I could hear her screaming at him, asking how the hell he could be so concerned about the cash when she was literally held at gunpoint and had her car stolen. After she hung up on him, I recall he mentioned something about how she'd better return to the store to cash out and give him back the money, or else he would call the police and say that she stole the money. That was the first event that made me realize that this place was hell. Well, the first event that really drove the point home, at least. The fact that he didn't care about her, and was worried about, like, $30 and change, was really messed up. The event that got me to actually quit the job happened about a month or so after that. To literally no one's surprise, the driver getting carjacked did not stop the manager from taking those deliveries to those two neighborhoods, and obviously, all of us were on edge when they came in. Unfortunately, the next event that happened was a delivery that I got. It was actually to the other neighborhood, which was a gated community, on the southern end of the delivery square. The community was on the very edge of where we would go as a store, and was actually partially outside of the delivery square, but of course, if they called, we had to take it. Now, when I say this was a gated community, some people may think that means that it was nice houses, and that it was like that to keep the less desirable people out. It was actually the opposite. The rumor around town was that there were so many people living there on house arrest, and people that had a required legal curfew, that the local PD had actually requested the property management to put a fence around the area to make it harder for them to leave the zone. Now, I don't know if that's true, but I wouldn't doubt that it wasn't completely fictitious. So, we had a delivery called into the store from this area, and it was, of course, after 6pm. And I was, of course, the one that got to the delivery. At this point, I was pretty done with this job, so I told my manager that I wanted someone else to come with me if I took it. He very quickly shot me down, and just told me to man up and take the damn delivery. I rolled my eyes and decided to just get it over with, grabbed the pizza, and took it out to my car and then headed in that direction. I pulled up to the house that the delivery was for and was actually a bit relieved. It was at the very end of the property, and was actually just outside the fenced area. To me, that meant that this person was just unfortunate in their home buying decisions. I got out with the pizza and went to the front door and rang the bell a couple of times, as I did. And there was no answer. Then I hit the doorbell once or twice more, and knocked. After waiting for five or so minutes of knocking, I was pretty done with the whole delivery, and was trying to figure out what exactly I should do. I, for some reason, decided that my best course of action would be to call the store and tell them that no one was answering. Why I thought this was the best idea, I honestly do not know, but it's what I did. The manager answered, and I told him that I was on the delivery to this address, and I informed him that the person was not answering the door. He then told me that I needed to stay until the pizza was delivered, and that he would call the number on the account to get a hold of the guy. I angrily asked him how long he expected me to stick around for this one delivery, and he basically told me to shut it, and that he would tell me when I could come back. Then... He hung up on me. 
I decided to basically just chill out and wait for him to call me back because, at this point, I was already here, so whatever was going to happen was already going to happen. After a few minutes, I heard what sounded like glass breaking, and someone shoving furniture around coming from inside the house. I took a bit of initiative and walked around to the side of the house to look into the window, which was where things went from bad to worse. When I looked in, I saw a man lying on the floor surrounded in a large pool of blood, and the living room was an absolute mess. Worse yet, there was someone in the room that was rifling through the furniture and throwing things around, clearly looking for something specific. I booked it back to my car and grabbed my phone to call the cops. I drove to the end of the street and then called 911, telling them what I saw. They asked me if I was able to stay in the area and see if anyone left the house while they headed in that direction, and I told them that I would, though looking back, this was kind of a dumb request and a stupid thing for me to agree to. I stayed on the phone with them until the officer showed up, and then I told him what I saw. This whole delivery turned into a fiasco, and I was parked a house or so down watching the multiple armed officers kick in the door, and then they shot the guy that was in the house. Around the time they got an ambulance to get the guy out of the house, I actually got a call from my manager. At this point, mind you, it had been around 20 or so minutes. I answered, and I told him that the police were on the scene and that they had shot someone. I probably told him a lot about the whole thing, but I was definitely shaking and freaking out. He then told me to come back to the store and hung up. I motioned to one of the officers and asked him if I was free to go back to the store. He took my information and told me that it was okay for me to leave and then mentioned that I should tell my manager to not let us do deliveries at night in this area. I thanked him for the advice, and I left. I got back to the store, and as soon as I walked in, my manager asked me where the pizza was. It was at this point that I realized I left it, along with my delivery bag, on the front porch when I went to look in the side window. I told him that I had left it, to which he responded with, That's coming out of your paycheck, then. I'm pretty sure I just stared at him dumbfounded, and he said that since I hadn't collected payment and didn't have the pizza, he was going to just assume that I ate it so it was coming out of my check. I'm pretty sure I screamed at him, calling him every name that I could think of, and then told him to shove this job up his ass. I went off. I threw my name tag and hat at him, and I left. I was beyond pissed that he had went that route with it after what had just happened. I saw someone that had just lost their life. I was there when the police shot someone else and pulled them out to an ambulance. I had given my information to a police officer because I was more or less a witness to all of this. And he was worried about $15 in pizza. I have no idea what happened at that house, and I was only contacted one other time about the whole thing, but I can tell you that I have personally never ordered from that specific pizza place, and I never will again. This happened to me back when I was around six or seven. It's one of those stories that you can look back on and think that it was super creepy because of what could have happened. Some people may look at it and think it's not a huge deal, but for me, it was freaky. And I'm glad that I got away from the scenario mostly unscathed. I think this was also the event that led to my mom being overprotective of me. And it's around when she stopped letting me walk around by myself. I guess I should add a little bit of perspective on that last part. Yes, I was like seven, but I lived in a small neighborhood with only a few houses, and my mom knew each and every one of our neighbors. 
It was a real slice of Americana to the point that the entire neighborhood would get together for a cookout on the 4th of July. It was that kind of tight-knit community. So while I was pretty young, my mom didn't have a problem with me riding my bike from one end of the block to the other. So back when this happened, there was a certain food company that was just starting to deliver in my area. It was one of those companies like Schwann, but it wasn't Schwann. This company was more focused on selling and delivering meat cuts to people than the full delivery that Schwann does. I honestly can't even remember the name of the company, but it was like Top Cuts or something like that. Anyways, they started delivering in my city and they had actually gotten quite a bit of business in my area, including my mom and dad. When they first moved into the area, the local manager slash owner did his introductions by doing door-to-door -door sales. I remember the first time I saw him. He showed up at our door at like 7.30 at night, and I just remember him looking incredibly tired. Even with how many years have passed, I can still see his dark eyes and greasy hair standing at our front door. So he showed up and introduced himself, and I think my mom told him that we weren't interested. But then he mentioned something about the first order being completely free, up to like $30. That caught my dad's attention, because he was a sucker for deals and they let him in to talk to us about what he was selling. I don't really remember his whole presentation, I just remember thinking about how tired he looked, and that he kind of smelled bad. I actually said something about it while he was talking, I do remember that. My dad told me that I was being rude, and I remember him laughing about it and saying that he'd been walking around the city since 7 that morning, selling meat to old people. So he agreed that he probably did smell bad. Even back then, something about him struck me as odd. Something about him was repulsive to me, and I think my fight or flight was saying that I should get away from him. Of course, he was in my living room, so that wasn't really an option. He did his whole presentation, my dad signed up for something to be delivered once every other week or something, and then he left. I was hoping I would never see him again, but that was not how things went. After that night, I kept seeing him drive around the area in what I can only describe as a kidnapper's van. It was a brown van with no windows on the side or back, and it had top cuts on the side, stuck with what looked like magnetic letters. Now I have to mention that most of the time that I saw him, he wasn't just driving around. He was typically going to houses to make deliveries, but there were some days where I swear I would see him just slowly driving down the street and not going anywhere in particular. When he saw me outside, he would always stop and wave. Sometimes he would ask me how I was doing and try to make small talk. Again, I was no older than seven, so I wasn't exactly a small talk master, and being social wasn't something I had mastered. So I would always just say hi and answer with yes or no or okay, or just small responses like that. Now all of this was a bit weird, sure, but the really creepy situation happened a few weeks after he had established himself in the neighborhood as the meat guy, and yes, we all called him the meat guy when we talked about him. On the day in question, I was riding my biker on the street going down to one end of the road and back and trying to do so as quickly as I could, trying to beat some arbitrary record time I had set for myself. I was going down the hill pretty fast, and as I was turning around, I saw the meat man's van pulling around the corner. As soon as I saw him turning, I decided I would keep going straight a bit up the next hill before I turned around so I didn't have to deal with him. As I passed him, I saw him waving and smiling at me. I ignored him and just kept pedaling. To my surprise, he quickly changed his direction from turning left to go up my street to turning the same way that I was going. After a few seconds of going up the next hill, I decided I was going too far from home and just stopped on the side of the road, deciding I would wait for him to pass me and then turn around and go home. To my surprise, he didn't pass me, but I heard his van pulling up behind me. I thought he was just going to stop and talk to me, but then I felt the front of his van hit the back of my bike. He didn't hit me hard, but it was enough to knock my bike down and knock me off the bike. I was a bit shocked and also in pain from hitting the concrete but I was beyond confused as to why that had happened. I stood up and looked down at my scraped knee, and then saw that my back wheel was bent in, and I remember being super mad about it. I remember starting to cry, and then him getting out of the van and walking up toward me to ask if I was okay. I told him he broke my bike, and I yelled at him asking why he had hit me. He was telling me to be quiet and kept asking me if I was injured or hurt. I told him that I scraped my knee because at this point I was just an angry kid, and I couldn't really logically explain my rage. The second that I said that, he knelt down to me and said, Oh no, it's okay. I'll take you to the hospital. And then motioned towards his van and tried to help me up. 
I remember yelling that I didn't need to go to the hospital, that I just wanted to walk home. And he kept insisting that I needed to get into his van so he could take me to the hospital. After some back and forth, he grabbed my arm and looked me dead in the eye saying, Listen here, you little brat. You're getting in my van one way or another, so shut the hell up and come on. When he said that, I started screaming as loudly as I could. While I didn't understand what exactly was going on, I knew it wasn't good, and all I could think to do to solve the problem was to scream. Thankfully, that was enough. One of the neighbors came outside to see what was going on, and all he saw was this man with the windowless van trying to basically abduct a seven-year-old boy. Thankfully, this old guy was also the type to not just stand and watch it play out. This old dude came at the meat guy with what I think was a hammer, and he started swinging on him until he got in his van and drove off. The old guy was asking me if I was okay, and telling me that he would walk me home so we could talk to my mom about what had happened. We got to my house and my mom came out to talk to the old man about the situation, and I tried my best to explain to her what had happened. I was a sobbing mess, so I probably didn't get many coherent thoughts out, but she was able to piece together what had occurred. I'm pretty sure I was grounded for going too far up the road, but I was perfectly fine with staying home for the rest of the summer, to be honest. I know my mom called the police and she and the old man made a report, but I have no idea if they ever caught the guy. Obviously, we never saw him again, much to everyone's relief. My dad was upset that he didn't get to approach the man about the situation, and that he was swindled out of like $150 for the month's deliveries. Like I mentioned, my mom was way more protective of me after this. When I got a new bike on my birthday, she had told me I could go two houses down in either direction, which was fine by me. So, Top Cuts Meat Guy, if you're out there and you hear this, I hope you and I never meet again. If we do, I'll make sure to let my dad know where you are. I think he still wants to have a talk with you about what happened back then. I have a story about a delivery driver that actually freaked me right the hell out when it happened, and is one of those stories that led to me actually being a bit paranoid whenever I order anything from anywhere. This happened last year, in 2021, when the world was going absolutely crazy, and I wasn't able to leave my house because I had COVID. The pandemic was pretty well underway at this point. I think it was April or so, and I was about a week out from getting my shot when I had apparently slipped up around some people I knew, and caught it. My fault. I blame myself entirely, and it absolutely sucked. Do not recommend 1 out of 10. That said, I was already pretty well established with the world of grocery delivery, as I had driven for one of the delivery companies a bit back in 2020 when I was laid off from my office job, and had actually relied on them after I was finally brought back into my company as a remote employee. Thankfully, the time between these two events was only four months, so unemployment, driving for DoorDash, and begging my parents for rent money was enough to at least keep me afloat. When I wasn't able to get out to get groceries or food for myself, I would put in orders to have them delivered. If I may say, this service is something that I absolutely love, and still use it to this day, even though I'm fine and my life has mostly gone back to normal. Most of the time, the drivers are decent at what they do. They will pick up what you ordered, bring it to your house, and will just leave it on your front porch, or just outside your door. I live in an apartment complex, so sometimes they'll contact me and ask me to come out and get it, and sometimes they will come into the building and leave it at the front door. I live on the bottom level, so it's not like they have to go up or downstairs at all. They just walk in, turn left, and I'm right there. However, if they ask me to come outside to get my order, I will. I get that they're in a rush, and sometimes they just want to get it over with quickly, and, well, I respect that. Unfortunately, as I said, I did end up getting sick. When it hit me, it hit me like a literal bus. I was 
barely able to get off the couch. I couldn't really speak. And I was coughing so hard that the room would spin when I stopped. That was just the first three days. After that, it honestly felt like it was getting worse. And I really wasn't sure if I was going to come out of it. Despite feeling like I was at my end, I was also craving Cheetos. And I had been one of those lucky ones that hadn't lost my sense of taste, so I really, really wanted Cheetos. I figured I could get a delivery of a few things that wouldn't perish, and just kind of let them sit outside my door until I got the strength to get up and get it that afternoon. I decided that having it delivered at around 3 would give me time to get up at 1, stop myself from falling over for an hour as I walked to the door, and grab it by the time they got there. I put the order into the app and requested the time for delivery, setting my alarm on my phone for 3pm just in case I didn't wake up to it. I also added a note that I needed them to deliver the groceries to my door as I was positive and possibly contagious, and I would not be able to meet them in the parking lot to collect the items. I emphasized that I was sick several times in my notes, hoping that the driver would see it and would get the hint to come in and leave the items. I put the order in around 9 and requested the 3pm delivery, and then went over to the couch and passed out. Unfortunately, I was out, out, and I slept through my alarm. I, however, did not sleep through the sound of my front door opening. At first, I thought that it was just the delivery driver knocking or maybe hitting the door, but as I slowly opened my eyes, I saw some random guy slowly walking into my apartment through the front door. Now, I will say that I was not fully there. I thought I was hallucinating at first, or dreaming that this was happening. But when I looked over and saw him reaching over to rifle through my jacket's pocket, I realized what he was doing, and it clicked that this was very real. I sat up as quickly as I could and asked what the hell he thought he was doing. He jumped and turned pale, and then basically threw my groceries into my apartment, and then ran away without as much as a word. I think I sat there for close to 20 minutes just staring at my scattered groceries, trying to piece together what all had just happened. Like, I was completely uncertain as to whether or not what he was doing was normal. Was he just coming in to drop off my stuff? But why was he going through my jacket? Like I said, I was completely out of it. So I just landed on it was normal and moved on to getting up to get my Cheetos. It wasn't until I was sitting there eating my junk food that it really hit me what had just happened. He was taking advantage of the fact that I said I was sick, and he was trying to rob me. That guy came in hoping I would be passed out, and he was looking for my wallet, and I just happened to catch him in the act. Even worse, he probably could have followed through and just told me he was dropping my food off, and I wouldn't have been coherent enough to really say anything about it. That's how out of my mind I was at that moment. I called the delivery company, and I notified them that the driver had come into my apartment and they really didn't seem to care. Ever since that happened, I've always made sure to lock my door, or at least connect the chain when I order anything for delivery. But thankfully, there haven't been any more events like that, and I really hope there never are. I have a story that happened a few years back when I was 19, and I was a delivery driver for a certain pizza place. I won't give the name of the actual restaurant, but I think you can figure out who it is if I call it Pizza House. This happened in what I would call a fairly small town that resided in the suburbs of a much larger city, and I thought that it was a pretty safe area up until this point. What happened could have happened to anyone really. 
but it happened to me because I happened to be the delivery driver that got sent to this delivery. It was a pretty normal night at the pizza house. We were fairly busy, but weren't being slammed too bad. I was one of the three drivers that were on the clock that night. We were busy enough that we didn't get to relax between drives. I remember I was on a double delivery when this took place. For those that don't know, a double delivery is literally what it sounds like. You're tasked with taking two deliveries at the same time. You basically drive to the closest location and then to the furthest location and then back. It's an incredible pain in the ass because you usually end up late to the second delivery and the customers get angry. So as I said, I had to take a double delivery and both of them were pretty far from the store. In fact, they were actually on the outer ring of our deliveries. When it came in, I grabbed the bags, put the light slash sign for Pizza House on the top of my car, which was a requirement, and headed off to the first location. Everything was going normal. I was talking to my girlfriend while the GPS told me which way to go. I was most of the way to the first location when I pulled up to a red light and stopped like I had to. I was complaining to my girlfriend about how much I genuinely disliked being the pizza boy. When I glanced over and saw a couple of guys crossing the road, I made eye contact with one of them and pretty much just kept talking about random nothingness. As I was watching the one cross the road, I noticed that the other guy walked a little closer to the lane I was in and my mind immediately clicked that something bad was about to happen. I was just sitting there, defenseless at the red light, chatting about literally nothing with my girlfriend on the phone, and it didn't occur to me until it was too late that these guys were up to no good. By the time it seriously clicked, the guy that was in the lane was pulling on my door handle and shouting that I needed to unlock the door. I thought about slamming my gas pedal and driving off. I thought about just running the light to get the hell away from this, but then I saw the first guy was standing in front of my car and pointing a gun at me. I was literally sitting there and staring down the barrel of some handgun on some street that I didn't know with two guys about to carjack me. Well, that's what I thought they were going to do. I thought they were seriously about to rob me, carjack me, steal all the store's cash and leave me on the side of the road. I even said that to my girlfriend. I told her to stay on the phone but not to say anything and that I was being robbed. She quickly stopped talking and did exactly as I asked. I looked back over to the guy at my passenger door. He was shouting at me to unlock it. I slowly did as he asked, and reached down to hit the unlock button. As soon as I did, he pulled the door open, and grabbed the two delivery bags with the pizza, then slammed the door, and then the two guys ran off. I literally just sat there with my heart pounding and blood pressure seriously spiking hard as I watched the two men run off with the food and nothing else. These guys seriously held me at gunpoint for pizza. Pizza? They didn't even take my money. They didn't even take my phone, my car, nothing. Just about $85 worth of pizza. I even told my girlfriend, between adrenaline-fueled tears, that I was just robbed, but they only took the pizza. I remember her asking if I was serious and even laughing slightly. I told her I needed to call the store and tell them. I hung up from the call and called my manager directly. I told him that I was robbed and he at first asked if I was okay, but when I told him that they just stole the pizza, he seemed a bit less serious about the situation. Obviously I was terrified. I was seriously thinking that I was going to be hurt or lose my livelihood. I'm actually thankful that these guys just wanted the food and decided not to take anything else. So that was a collection of delivery driver horror stories or horror stories involving delivery drivers for two of those, surprisingly. We don't always get the other side of that, where the delivery driver is the horror of the story. Um... And I'm kind of thankful that we got some of those. So thank you very much to everyone who submitted their stories and anyone on Reddit who lets me use their stories. You guys are amazing. Thank you so very much for the content. And obviously, a huge thank you to TDN. Again, this man, I owe him a lot. Uh, thanks to him. I've had so many doors and opportunities put in front of me that I can't even explain them all. So thank you, TDN, or Jay, however you want to be thanked, um, for being such an amazing person. And just helping me through a lot of stuff, man. So thank you. Um, and also thank you, obviously, for narrating the stories today. And please, if you're listening to this point, please go check out that book on Audible. 
It's by Boris Basic, narrated by Jay Kirk, a.k.a. TDN. And it's an awesome book. Boris is an amazing author. TDN's an amazing narrator. You will not be disappointed. So please do check it out if you can. If you already have an Audible membership and have a credit you were thinking about where to spend it on, there you go. There's one to check out. Plus, by doing so, you have out some indie authors and indie narrators. So it's win-win, right? You get a cool book. They get helped out. Plus, leave a review for it, too. Leave a good review for it or a review. An honest review. Let me rephrase that. Leave an honest review for it. Um, That's the best way to do things. Don't just give it five stars and walk away. Give critique. Leave four stars if it's not up to your five-star decision. Anyway, that's enough plugging. Uh, If you liked the video, please do hit that thumbs up button. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. And if you really want to um, help out, go down below. There is now a section where you can hit thanks, which is basically a donation to the channel. Or join if you want to join memberships, or go to Patreon, where for a dollar a month you can get early access to content like this. Always, always appreciated, and never expected. Ever expected. Trust me. That all said. Uh, oh, sorry. Also, leave me a comment down below letting me know what you thought of the video today. Really, that that's actually really appreciated, too. So, anyway, so I hope you all have a beautiful day. I hope you're having a great week, and I hope that I will see you again on the next video. But until then, my friends, sleep well.